When you think of the SAS, something you might not think about is them getting involved in a prison riot to rescue a single hostage. However, back in 1987, this is exactly what happened. The 28th of September 1987. D-Wing, Peterhead Prison, Aberdeenshire, North East Scotland. Violence breaks out. This was something that was not particularly uncommon in the prison, dubbed the Hate Factory and Scotland's Gulag. A year prior, another riot had taken place, during which a young prison officer was taken hostage and was threatened to be thrown off the roof. Conditions in the prison were notoriously harsh, with limited electricity, no toilets and cells, and being positioned far away from many of the prisoners' hometowns, making visits from family difficult and less common. Combine this with the fact that many prisoners were serving life sentences for violent crimes with nothing to lose, resulted in the events resulting in the SAS needing to get involved. The events of the 28th of September began with a prison guard, Bill Florence, being stabbed in the leg and having hot fat thrown over him. Other prisoners decided this was their time to act. By the end, another prison guard, Jackie Stewart, had been taken hostage alongside Bill Florence. Windows and cells were smashed and fires had been started. Later, Bill was released by the prisoners due to their fear of him dying of his injuries. However, Jackie was left at the mercy of his camp. For the next three days, Bill was beaten, stabbed three times, and paraded around with lighter fluid in his pockets, being threatened to get set on fire. Prisoners were taken to the roofs, with messages on bedsheets sharing their anger at the prison system. Whilst all this was happening, the police were unsuccessfully negotiating with the prisoners through radios in an attempt to try and bring a peaceful end to the siege. Police believed it would take them 12 minutes to perform a hostage rescue mission, far too long for them to risk the operation, believing this gave the prisoners plenty of time to kill Jackie if they caught on to what was happening. Furthermore, due to the prisoners not having firearms, meant armed police could not be sent in to deal with them. At a stalemate with no clear end in sight, Scottish Secretary Malcolm Rifkind and the police asked for the help of the military to help end the siege. Under the permission of Margaret Thatcher, 20 SAS troopers from the counter-terrorism team were heading to the scene in the back of a C-130. On the morning of the fifth day, it was time for the SAS to strike, for the first time in mainland Britain, for a civilian issue. At 5am, it was time for the plan to take place. The local police would keep the prisoners distracted by pretending to negotiate, whilst the SAS assaulted the prison from multiple entry points simultaneously. Armed with wooden batons and 9mm Brownings, a four-man rescue team tasked to release Jackie snuck across the prison roof and entered through a hole made by the prisoners. At the same time, other teams blew through the walls of the three floors of D-Block. With the use of CS gas and stun grenades, the teams made their way inside, and within three minutes Jackie had been freed unharmed, the rioters were in handcuffs, and the local police and prison authorities had re-entered the prison to retake order and control whilst the SAS troopers left and disappeared as quick as they had arrived. Following the incident, the three main ringleaders were sentenced for a further 27 years in prison for their part in the riot. Following the five-day ordeal, Jackie would return to work following a six-week break, and to this day works in the prison museum and Bill continued to work in the prison system despite having to move away from the area following threats made to him and his family by those involved in the riots.